Just yesterday in Sacramento, state lawmakers announced a new program for human trafficking prevention that will now be implemented in public schools around our state. This makes California the first state to adopt this type of prevention education for teachers and students. It will teach them how to recognize someone around them who may be a victim of human trafficking. Oakland Assemblyman Rob Bonta is the author of the bill. He joins us live in the studio this morning. Uh, congratulations on 1227 getting passed and Thank the you. governor signing it in October. Mike, first question is how do you implement it? How do we do this? We're rolling it out in the school starting January 1st in 7th grade and, and or middle school and then in high school there will be opportunities for the curriculum to be taught uh, in every county and every school district throughout the state. What so, are you teaching specifically? What are they going to be hearing? They're teaching about what uh, abusive relationships look like, the, the process for recruiting uh, uh, human trafficking victims um, and, and how to avoid that. Also, not just preventing victims, uh, what, what, who would be victims from being victims in the first place, but uh, preventing buyers and exploiters from ever being recruited in, in, into that side of the human trafficking, human tra tragedy. So uh, a, a lot of awareness, a lot of education takes on a, a different, a unique approach. Instead of increasing the penalties on those who exploit or buy, which is where a lot of the focus has been in the legislature, it takes on a different approach, which says we can prevent this from happening in the first place. Mm -hmm. or, or if it's starting to happen, we can identify it early and stop it early. So it addresses the issue at its root, which is a unique approach, makes us a national leader. So this leader. must be a big problem if you decided that this, it's time to have this legislation. Has this increased dramatically over at least your term? It's increased. It's, it's a $150 billion global industry. It's the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. There are tens of thousands of human trafficking victims every year in California. There's 5,000 a year approximately right here in, in the Bay Area. And these are all our kids. It's boys and girls, mostly girls, um, as young as eight years old, um, being trafficked for sex and for labor. Um, and it's absolutely unacceptable. We have a moral responsibility to address it. And this bill really helps us do so. So often when people hear human trafficking, you think of these anonymous global rings. It can start with one guy making friends with a girl. Absolutely. I mean, this is modern day slavery and it's happening everywhere. And can it, people get lured into it without even realizing yes. mm -hmm. this is what's going on? I mean, it's interesting, there's a, a stat that shows that 78% of the human trafficking victims don't believe that they're victims. They think that they're in a relationship, certainly an abusive, exploitive relationship. Uh, sometimes they're being trafficked by their parents. So uh, this is happening everywhere. If, if, if people who are watching think that this is happening somewhere else, overseas, uh, in another city besides theirs, they're wrong. It's happening uh, here, wherever here is, for the individuals that are watching, and now. And we need to step up and address it together. Do you together. see a pattern? Of, is it happening primarily in, in areas of low income, where people have fewer resources, or is it happening everywhere? It's happening everywhere. It's happening in rural and urban areas. It's happening inland and coastal. It's happening north, south, and central valley, everywhere in the state of California. Uh, one commonality is it happens more in areas where there are a lot of transportation hubs, where there are, are ports or airports or highway inter, uh, areas, um, highways and freeways. Why is that? Um, easy to, easier to move um, those who are being trafficked, easier for the buyers uh, to have access. Uh, to those that they're exploiting and abusing. Um, so that's one commonality we've noticed, but it's happening everywhere. Assemblyman, since you're here, I want to ask you about Parkland, Florida, and the shooting yesterday. A lot of lawmakers being called out, uh, both in Washington and state houses across the country, saying, you know, you guys are not doing enough to solve this problem of, of mass shootings. Governor Scott just said it this morning to, to his own legislators. Uh, what can you do in Sacramento to prevent these mass shootings? And not you, but all, all of the lawmakers there. We've done a lot here in, in, in Sacramento. We're one of the leaders nationally in terms of our um, gun safety laws and, and addressing some of the mass shootings. They, they still occur, so there's always more that we can do. I think, first of all, thoughts and prayers are not enough. Action is required, an aggressive action that really gets at the root of this problem, whether it be mental health or access to military-style weapons. Um, we had an individual who had an AR-15 in, in, in Florida. Uh, he had some mental health issues. Uh, I believe that could have been prevented. Do you but think that gun should be banned, the AR-15, in this it, state? It's, it is banned here at, yep. since 1989. There's some people that are, uh, whose owners are, are grandfathered in, but since 1989, it's, it's, it's been banned. And, and yes, I, I think that some of these military style weapons that are designed to create as much damage in a shorter period of, of time um, should be banned, uh, certainly regulated, um, highly. Banned across the country, I mean, eliminated. Uh, I think so, I think so. I think, it, it, I mean, it's not time to, to be uh, meek in our response. Are you hopeful the, that something like that, we can't even agree on 
100 times smaller issues. The country is so divided. Do you have hope that the country will come to an agreement on gun control? I, I do have hope. I'm optimistic. Sort of my job as a legislator is to be forever optimistic. I was very disappointed after Newtown, which was right when I was elected, that we failed to act after children were shot in an elementary school and massacred. That should have been an opportunity for our country to rise up together and, and get some common sense uh, background checks completed. We didn't. We failed there. Uh, we failed multiple times since because in everyday places, every day people are being shot. Nightclubs, uh, churches. concerts, churches, schools, the places where we, we ought to feel safe, and that's wrong. Um, I, you know, if it continues to happen at the rate that it's happening, it's, it seems to be increasing. I think since um, January 1st, it's almost like every other day there's been a mass shooting. Uh, we must act. It's a moral imperative. It's unacceptable to continue to proceed the way we are. All right. Assembly so Thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.